John, hey man, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? All right, got, got some projects going today. Um, I don't have the right tools. Uh, do you have a screwdriver I could borrow? Uh, another Phillips? I dropped yours overboard. Hey, do you have a uh, tape measure? Do you have a spoon I could borrow? Wow. I totally <laughs> forgot to ask. Um, do you have any uh, hand sanitizer? I got some folks coming over. And I'll be back two weeks from tomorrow. Would that be cool? Okay. Gosh, is he gone yet? Phew, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> How can you be courteous to your fellow cruisers, courteous to the locals that you might be visiting? And like everything else, it's our opinion and our experience. <laughs> we got the caveats out of the way. So what are some of the topics that we're going to talk about today? Anchoring. How close should you get? How do you let people know that they're getting a little close? What's okay to toss overboard? Can you throw those lemon peels overboard? Dinghy etiquette. How to tie up to someone else's boat and how to tie up to the dock. Yeah, people go wrong here all the time. And how about driving your dinghy near anchored boats? There's the right way to pass by and certainly a wrong way to pass by. Loose halyards wrapping against the mast. <laughs> When's it okay to take a really good look at a boat? How late can you play that music and run that generator? How early can you start? When docking your boat, how do you communicate with someone who's offering to help? And what about when you're invited onto a boat? Should you bring a gift? What should you bring when you come by for a visit? Flags, country flags. Do you need to fly them when you enter a country? I mean, they are called courtesy flags. Do you have another screwdriver? Another Phillips? Yeah, I dropped yours overboard. Are you serious? My grandfather gave that screwdriver to me. It was like a collector's item and meant a lot to me. There's definitely gonna be a time when you need something that another cruiser has and they're gonna need something from you. Yeah, you can't keep all tools on board all the time. But there's definitely a few do's and a few don'ts. You done with that screwdriver yet? Uh, I'll bring it back in a few right, days. The protocol for borrowing tools is basically this. You only keep the tool as long as you need it or overnight. That's a maximum unless you've made arrangements. You don't ever want somebody who's let you borrow a tool have to ask for it back. What is the best way to make friends while cruising? Okay. By and large, people are very, very friendly, mm -hmm. very open to sharing their experiences and getting to know others. In fact, it's it's one of the best things about the lifestyle. How you doing? Oh, good, man, how are you? Good. My wife and I were thinking about buying one of these. What do you think of it? We love it, absolutely fantastic yeah. for us. There's really no better way of doing it than just putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. slowing the digging down, and saying hi. And if there was one line that's the best icebreaker ever, it's something to the effect of, I really love your boat. Also asking people for local knowledge, like, hey, where can I take the garbage? Or <laughs> do you know a good dinghy dock to land? Things like that kind of get the conversation going. Yeah, and we've met so many awesome people simply from asking them where we can take our garbage. <laughs> when you're in your dinghy and you approach somebody's boat, there is definitely a bit of a dance that goes on. <laughs> when you first come up in the dinghy, you're using your motor to keep yourself in place. You're exchanging pleasantries. You're not touching each other's boats. There's a bubble there. And <laughs> right. you're very respectful of not just assuming that you're gonna come up and grab onto their boat. Yeah, don't grab onto somebody else's boat. The initiative is actually on the larger boat, the larger boat's owner, for them to say, Can I go ahead and take your painter? We'll hook you up here. Oh, dude, that'd be great. Thank right. you. If they ask you on board, it's, in our opinion, the best thing is to have them hold the line while you get on their boat and then you take your line and ask the captain where they would like you to tie their dinghy and you tie your dinghy. Right. It's not the captain's job to tie your boat up. You're responsible for the dinghy, so you tie it up to their boat. There's a sign that says, you know, that they have to go slow on one side. And on the other side, there's, it's not like there's a sign that says, hey, you can go fast now. 
But what there is, is there's a bunch of anchored boats. Mostly, it's just a courtesy check. Yeah. Awesome. One question we get all the time is, what are you supposed to bring to somebody's boat when you're invited over? There's definitely protocol here. The default situation is it is always assumed to be B-Y-O-B. Bring your own bottle. But basically, bring your own drink. It's not because other folks in the cruising community are stingy, although some are stingy. Mm, these are great. Do you have any more? It's because getting replacement stores when you're out cruising can be very difficult. So it's standard practice to arrive at somebody else's boat with your own drink in hand. Thank you so much for having us. Hey. So fun to it be was here. really fun, yes. Of course there are local laws about what you can and cannot dump. Some cruisers out there do feel that it's okay to throw those peanut shells overboard or the watermelon rind or the lemon peel. And while it is true that these will biodegrade over time, the time could be on the order of weeks or months before it's gone completely. So really dropping anything overboard, whether it's lettuce or some sesame seeds or whatever, it's really a big no-no in any anchorage. And you do see it. You see those floating orange peels and lettuce and it's, it's just kind of gross. This is a total noob mistake. We have been guilty of it in the past and almost everybody has been once or twice and that is the halyard wrapping against the mast you think okay we're tied down we're back at our slip just crank that sucker tight and we're all good now the wind switches and what do you hear ping 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 It's really hard to go to sleep once you start tuning in on that. It's really bad etiquette and you will be well known <laughs> in your anchorage or your mooring field or your marina if you leave your halyards to wrap against the mast. Let's talk about docking etiquette. There's a right way and a wrong way to do this. The wrong way is to simply take whatever line they throw you from the boat and tie it to the nearest cleat. The right way is to get specific instructions from the captain. On the, yeah, right down that cleat there. I like a little bit of off the front end. That's perfect, thank you. So all you captains out there, as you're coming in and you see the courteous helper on the dock ready to take a line, remember, you need to give specific instructions about how you want the boat tied up. Maybe just ask them to tie it up to the closest cleat, but leave a lot of slack while you do all the work to get the boat snug and tidy. This has come up in our discussion forum, and that is courtesy flags. Do you have to fly the country's courtesy flag? Well, officially, it is a courtesy. But a lot of countries do require that you fly their national flag from your starboard spreader. And while this may not be punishable by a fine or anything like that, there are many cases where officials, customs boats, police boats, will give you a visit and maybe ask you where your courtesy flag is. We don't raft up very often, but every once in a while, it's a necessity in a crowded marina. If you're rafted and need to cross someone else's boat, the right way is to walk across the foredeck and not through other boats' cockpits. Generators, oh, this is a big one. When is it okay to run your generator? It's a necessary evil for some of us, a lot of us. We're trying to get rid of our generator right now. The best time to run your generator is during the midday to early afternoon. Once people have settled into their cockpit, maybe with their sundowners, getting dinner ready, they don't want to be listening to your gen set. And the same goes for first thing in the morning. Yeah, I mean, you wake up and you're just taking in all the beauty and the serenity. The last thing you want to hear is <laughs> <laughs> So I would say just definitely not before 8 a.m. Music, loud music, parties, <laughs> you know, cha-cha-cha. It's, re <laughs> it's really amazing how far sound will travel on the water. So anytime you're on board listening to tunes, remember if uh, it's pretty loud on the boat, it's pretty loud for all your neighbors too. Big caveat here, 
if you're listening to good music, you really <laughs> deserve to share it with everybody. You've probably heard this one, but it's always good to remove your shoes before getting on someone else's boat. And it's both tradition and good etiquette to always ask permission to come aboard. Hey guys. Hey, how you doing? Good. Permission to come aboard. Come on out. Oh, but wait. <laughs> Remember that tool I borrowed a couple years ago? <laughs> when it comes to tying up the dinghy at a crowded dock, there are a few do's and don'ts. Don't tie your entire painter onto the cleat. Don't tie it too close or too loose. About three to four feet is about right. And it's a good idea to not raise your outboard out of the water as the propeller blades could damage other dinghies. And since we were just talking about dinghies, let's talk about dinghies and noise in an anchorage. When you're passing by a boat, when possible, go in front of their bow so that their wake is absorbed by the bows of their boats and not the side or the stern. And it's really the aft cockpit where people are mostly hanging out. So if you go around the front of a boat, you're taking your noise further away from those who are hanging out in the cockpit. Who doesn't enjoy walking the docks, looking at all the pretty boats? But in most marinas, some people live aboard. We've been guilty of this many times ourselves, but just beware that the finger piers are a lot like a liveaboard's front porch. Oh, wow, look at this boat. Oh, this is, this is kind of cool. Let's go look. I've never seen one of these. Let's take a closer look. Oh, my God, it's so big in there. <gasps> but look at this cockpit oh, back yeah. here. Oh, oh wow. Uh, hello, can, can, can we help you? Oh, oh uh, sorry. hi, sorry about that. Uh. Oh, we saved the best for last, anchoring. Whoo, this one can be difficult in a crowded anchorage. Anchoring is a really, really big subject. We should probably dedicate an entire video to just figuring out where to anchor in a crowded spot. We take the position that nobody in an anchorage really owns the water. However, those who are there first do set the tone for the rest of the boats. As you're coming into the anchorage, something you should definitely ask your neighbors is, How much row do you have out? 150? That will determine the anchoring radius and how far you have to be away from your neighbors. You have to be very cognizant of where the winds and the tides are as you drop your anchor and assess how close your neighbors are. Because we're all sharing this space, you're never completely bedded down in your anchorage. Conditions will change, boats will swing at slightly different radiuses. You always have to be watching what's happening with the weather and the tides and the current to make sure that you're not gonna hit anybody else and they're not gonna hit you. What can you do if somebody comes in and appears to be anchoring a little too close? <laughs> well, we coined the term bitch wings because we were looking for an, an anchoring spot in a very tight anchorage in the British Virgin Islands. And a woman came out and put her arms up on her hips and gave us a pretty stern look about, hey, don't come near me. But you have to realize that you're really using up your social equity in the anchorage area. Because once you fly the bitch wings, people are probably gonna give you a little more distance. Hey. These guys maybe aren't quite as friendly as the rest. So one thing you can do when somebody's looking for a spot is you can be up on your decks and you can tell people, hey, I've got 150 feet out. That's very helpful for them to choose the right spot. In general, what you want to do is you want to find a spot equidistant in between other boats as long as it will accommodate your swing. Thanks for watching everybody. This was a, a different kind of cruising video, but hopefully there's some helpful information and probably some fuel for discussion. And thanks to John and Janae for being such good sports. They're pretty good actors. They were so fun to work with.
And thanks to Blue Whale Sailing and Salt Sail for lending us their charter boats to illustrate these great tips. Thanks so much to our supporters, whether it's on Patreon or PayPal, we really appreciate the financial support. Put a huge order in for camera gear, it was very expensive, and so we really appreciate the backup. And thanks everybody for watching and clicking like and sharing, we really appreciate all the views and subscriptions. Take care everybody, we'll talk to you next week. Do we okay. get the outtakes? I gotta get my shit <laughs> yeah. together, hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah, we want all the backdrop. <laughs> Oh, hey, Nick. John, man, how's it going? All right, how about you? The boat's looking great. Um, Thank you. Hey, listen, got a couple projects going on. I need to borrow a, uh, a screwdriver. Okay, you want a Phillips or a standard? I mean, either one, what's oh. the difference? Okay, hey, hey, Jan, there's a Phillips screwdriver on the NAS station down. Phillips or standard? Take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't laugh. Uh, oh, that's too bad. Hey John. How's it going? Reach for it. Don't let me. I'm not gonna let you take it. Oh. Hey! It's my hair. Uh, no, you're <laughs> driving me crazy. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Do you have a water bottle by any chance? I need a water bottle. Ooh. Let me grab one out of the cooler here. Oh, if it's not too much trouble. Like, <laughs> like give it a look of like really dude. Or shake your head. Oh yeah. <laughs> a little salt water on it, but other than that, it's okay. Only fell in the water once? Yeah, only once. <laughs> like, um, two weeks from tomorrow. Is that cool? Okay. <laughs> hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, we'll just, I'll get this right. Okay. I'll be back, uh... I'll be back two weeks from tomorrow. Would that be cool? Okay. Thanks, man. Can we kill people for a living? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. oh, I got it, I got it. Is it no, yeah. Jan, say, is he gone yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Tell me now? Yeah. Gosh, is he gone yet? Shoo. Jeez. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> that was perfect, that was you guys. Perfect. Okay. Okay, um, now get me walking away with all the crap in my hand. <laughs> then we're done. Oh, I got a prayer. Yeah, we'd have we do. What do we have that we can drop and go let it go into Wait, the no, water? I, I, <laughs> oh, perfect! I'll come back. And I'll be like, oh, will sorry. Will the water bottle float? I guess. It, okay. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh. I'll be like, oh, it's be great. Yeah, you know what you could do? You no, could just, I'm gonna surprise you with what I said. Okay. Right? Drop like anything, like a rock, but say, oh man, yes. that was the <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Do you want me to, uh, feel me walking? No, just I'm gonna go like this okay. and then walking away.